Hello, thank you for joining us today to learn about grant-related topics as part of our Get That Grant series offered by the Office of Research in the University of Michigan Medical School. Today we're going to be talking about the NIH Biosketch and we're going to start out with Biosketch Basics. This will be useful if you are creating your first NIH Biosketch or if you need to update an existing Biosketch for the NIH. So what is a biosketch? We're going to be talking about the purpose of this important component of the NIH grant application today, including formatting and template forms for the biosketch, uh, components of the biosketch and how they should be written, as well as examples. We'll talk a little bit about biosketch compliance, as well as additional resources to check out for starting to put together your NIH biosketch. Biosketches give applicants the opportunity to describe the magnitude and significance of their scientific contributions, as well as provide detailed information about their research experience in the context of the proposed project. This video will provide basic information on putting together an NIH biosketch. Please check out our other videos on the biosketch for more in-depth detail on how to strategically use your biosketch to make your grant application more competitive. As far as formatting, an NIH biosketch is limited to a maximum of five pages. Font size must be 11 points or larger. We've listed some recommended fonts here, but the rule of thumb is that whatever font you use must be no more than 15 characters per linear inch. Please note that figures, tables, and graphics are not allowed on your biosketch. For the most up-to-date formatting, guidance, and instructions on the NIH Biosketch, please refer to this link at the bottom of the slide. The NIH updated the Biosketch format in March 2021. This slide highlights a blank non-fellowship Biosketch in the new format. If you were familiar with the previous Biosketch form, the changes in the new format are as follows. Section B, previously titled Positions and Honors, has been renamed Positions, Scientific Appointments, and Honors. For the non-fellowship biosketch, as shown here, Section D has been removed. On the fellowship biosketch, which is not pictured, Section D has been updated to remove research support. As before, the personal statement and contributions to science section include narrative statements whereas the information that goes in the positions, scientific appointments, and honors section is in a list form. I'll be showing you some examples of this in the presentation later. The updated forms and instructions will be required for use for applications and RPPRs submitted for due dates on or after January 25, 2022. Please check out the notices listed at the bottom of this slide for specific changes and details on the updated Biosketch format page. Section A of the Biosketch is your personal statement. It's a narrative section in which you're going to want to do the following. Justify your role in the project and explain why you are well suited for the role. This could include training or past experience, technical expertise, or significant collaborations and past performance in this or related fields. You can use this section to explain anything you'd like the reviewers to know about your career and research directions. For instance, if you are proposing work in a new direction or had factors affecting productivity, such as parental leave, family care responsibilities, or a medical condition. To highlight your past performance in the topic of your research proposal or related topics, include ongoing and completed research projects from the past three years that you want to draw attention to. This was previously captured under Section D Research Support in previous versions of the NIH Biosketch. Finally, provide up to four publications or research products that highlight your experience and qualifications relevant to the project. Examples of research products include conference proceedings such as meeting abstracts, posters or other presentations, audio or video products, patents, data or databases. 
Here's an example of a personal statement in an NIH biosketch. Notice that the applicant has written a narrative statement which includes the elements that I presented in the previous slide. The applicant has also included ongoing and recently completed projects within the past three years that they want to highlight to the reviewers, as well as four citations relevant to the application. Please note that listing ongoing and recently completed projects is optional. However, funding and effort should not be included. Section B of the biosketch is positions, scientific appointments, and honors. You want to list in reverse chronological order all positions and scientific appointments, both domestic and foreign, including affiliations with foreign entities or governments. This would include titled ac academic, professional, or institutional appointments, whether or not remuneration is received, and whether full-time, part-time, or voluntary. You also want to list any relevant academic and professional achievements and honors. For students, postdoctorates, and junior faculty, this could include scholarships, traineeships, fellowships, or department awards. For clinicians, this could include clinical licensures or specialty board certifications. Here is an example of Section B in the NIH Biosketch. You can see here that the applicant has listed positions, scientific appointments, and honors in reverse chronological order, including foreign and domestic scientific appointments and positions. Section C is where you're going to describe up to five of your significant contributions to science in narrative statements. In this section, you're going to highlight your general scientific contributions and achievements not necessarily related to work proposed in the application, which is what differentiates it from the personal statement. The description of each contribution should follow a framework which touches on the following. The historical background that frames the scientific problem. The central findings. Influence and findings on the progress of science or the application of those findings to health or technology and your specific role in this described work. Each of the five contributions to the science can include up to four of your relevant publications or research products. For junior investigators, it's expected that you will have fewer contributions. Finally, you may provide a URL to a full list of your published work. Please note that this URL must be to a government website. Here is an example of a contributions to science section. Notice that the applicant has written a narrative statement that includes the elements described on the previous slide, followed by four publications that are relevant to the described contribution to science. Research products that are under development, such as manuscripts that have not been accepted for publication, can be mentioned in the narrative sections. However, they cannot be cited as one of the citations. The description of each contribution should be no longer than one half page, including citations. Notice here that at the end of the final contribution to science, the applicant has listed a URL to their complete list of published work. As of the March 2021 update to the NIH Biosketch, for the non-fellowship Biosketch, Section D has been removed. Section D, Scholastic Performance, is located on Fellowship Biosketches only. Note that only the following types of applicants must complete this section. Applicants for predoctoral and postdoctoral fellowships, applicants to dissertation research grants, and candidates for research supplements to promote diversity in health-related research from the undergraduate through postdoctoral levels. Here is an example of Section D, Scholastic Performance, which should only be included in fellowship applications to the NIH. Please note, no ongoing or completed research support should be listed. Now I'm going to touch briefly on Biosketch compliance. Make sure that you're not submitting a Biosketch on an expired form. Likewise, check all other biosketches in your grant application for expiration dates. 
always refer to this link for the most up-to-date instructions and formats of the NIH Biosketch. Blank format Word documents can be found at this link, and in the upper right-hand corner of the document, you will see the expiration date. Another area of compliance to be aware of is in relation to listing citations on your NIH Biosketch. The PMC reference number, or PMC ID, is required for all applicable papers listed on your NIH Biosketch. Please note the examples of the PMC ID number in this example citation here and here. The PMC ID number is different than the PMID number listed in PubMed. The PMC ID number is the number that is compliant with NIH access policy and is the one you want to have listed on all of your Biosketch citations. You can use the My NCBI tool or the ID converter tool to make sure that you have PMC IDs properly listed on your NIH Biosketch. If you are looking for a tool to create and maintain your NIH Biosketch, try ScienceEV, the Science Experts Network Curriculum Vitae. With ScienceEV, you can automatically format your Biosketch according to NIH requirements or easily transform an existing Biosketch from one format to another. For example, an old NIH format to new NIH format or an NIH format to NSF format. This eliminates the need to repeatedly enter Biosketch information. It also reduces the administrative burden associated with federal grant submission and reporting requirements. It also provides easy access to a researcher claimed data repository with information on expertise, employment, education, and professional accomplishments. We hope you found this video helpful. This slide highlights the sources of information used for this presentation. Our research development team has created a checklist to help our investigators develop their NIH Biosketch. You can find this checklist as well as other Biosketch and grant related resources and videos on our website. If you are interested in learning about other grant related topics or have ideas for our next workshop or video, please email us at msgrants at umich.edu.